proteins or the DNA, then you can also go for validation, whether it is true or not. So both these things can be achieved using yeast hybrid assays. And there is one more related technique, which is called as pull down assay. And probably this of the partners, you can read something about pull down assay also. But mostly nowadays people use yeast hybrid assays for these uh, studying the interactions. Okay, now we'll come to the principle of yeast hybrid assay. And be careful, if you understand the principle of yeast hybrid assay, then it becomes easy for you to understand the uh, uh, various types of assays. Okay, shall we go for the principle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Okay, yes, sir. say this, uh, the whole yeast hybrid assays, they work on one transcription factor called as GAL4, G-A-L. You can see here, it is called as GAL4. Okay, have you heard of GAL4? No, sir. no? no okay. Sir. GAL4 is a transcription factor and it is present only in yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae you know saccharomyces cerevisiae yes sir yes sir yes, okay yes sir it's a it's a transcription factor saccharomyces cerevisiae and this transcription factor is very important for the conversion of the galactose into galactose 6 phosphate because when the galactose is imported into the yeast cell then it has to be converted into galactose 6-phosphate and this conversion, this biochemical conversion requires six different enzymes and they are called as GAL1, GAL2, PGM2, GAL7, GAL10 and ML1. These are the different biochemical uh, say or the proteins or the enzymes which are important for the conversion of the galactose into galactose 6-phosphate. And the expression of means these are the six genes which are to be expressed when the galactose is to be converted to galactose 6-phosphate. And you know the, you just recall the operon system. You know operon system, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Operon system has got several structural genes and which is governed by just one promoter. This is also almost the same case. These six genes are governed by only one promoter, but there are three different transcription factors. One is called as the most important is the GAL4, and second is GAL80, and the third one is GAL3. So now we shall see the function of these three transcription factors. GAL4 plays a central role of DNA binding transactivator. The trans fact, transcription factor is a general term. And if you classify, then it can be classified as either trans activator or it can be called as trans repressor. Okay. Hope you know the meaning of these things, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Say trans activator is nothing but when this transcription factor binds to the DNA, then the transcription is activated. Whereas there can be another type of transcription factor when it binds to the DNA, then the transcription goes down or it is repressed. So in that case, we call that transcription factor as trans factor or repressor. Is it clear? Yes. yes sir. So now we shall look into the specific activity of GAL4. See, GAL4 is a trans transcription activator. It means whenever it binds to the DNA in the specific region, in the promoters of those six genes, then the transcription of those six genes is activated. But, but there is uh, another transcription factor which is called as GAL80. And when this GAL80 binds to GAL4, then GAL4 becomes inactive. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Ga when GAL4 becomes inactive, then you know what happens to the transcription of those six genes. So when GAL4 is inactivated, then probably the transcription activity of those genes is inactivated. So therefore, 
galactose cannot be converted into galactose 6 phosphate is it okay yes sir yes yeah yes, now there is one more transcription factor which is called as gal3 and gal3 in the presence of galactose it binds and causes a conformational change in gal excuse sir yeah uh, this gal4 is uh, binding to the repressor site or to the promoter site because in no. every operon there will be repressor no, 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 and no, no, it will no, no. the proteins will be binding to repressor correct it, it is not a clear operon operon is uh, something else but it is similar to operon only in the sense that six different genes are governed by one promoter that's all and all the transcription factors would bind to specific sites which are called as cis elements in the promoter region is it clear is it clear okay okay sir okay. gal4 yeah. is binding to cis site now cis site i'll i'll come to the cis, cis, details of cis elements later okay sir okay so now we are talking of gal3 and in the presence of gal uh, in the presence of ga galactose it binds and brings a conformational change in gal80 and which then allows you know once uh, there is a conformational change in gal80 then it cannot bind to gal4 so therefore there will be constant transcription and translation of those six genes producing all necessary proteins for the conversion of galactose into galactose 6 phosphate is it clear yes okay so therefore gal3 is an inhibitor of gal80 okay and gal4 has got three major domains you know domains right protein domains yes sir. if you don't know just find out the definite function of a domain domain is nothing but it is an independent sequence of the protein which can fold and function because protein folding is very important that you know okay it can fold independently and also it can function independently of the rest of the sequence of the protein so that is called as a domain and and gal4 has got three major domains one is called as transcription activator or it is also called as activating activating domain or activation domain and briefly it is called as ad and then dna binding domain you know the function of dna binding domain hello no sir yeah you know the function of binding domain okay by the the function of binding domain is to bind to the specific cis element on the dna it helps in the binding of the transcription factor to specific cis element on the promoter region is it clear yes sir yes sir okay and the and the third binding domain or the uh, domain is the binding because gal4 can also bind to gal80 and that domain is called as id interacting domain id stands for interaction domain or interacting domain but for yeast hybrid assays this id is not so important what is important is only ad and bd and gal4 has got both ad and bd okay so therefore it can come function as a complete unit of transcription factor is it okay yes sir okay now i'll i'll just uh, uh, i'll not be using uh, this uh, uh, say slide i'll just uh, explain now you imagine that there are two proteins protein a and protein b okay Okay. say protein a has got activating domain or ad and protein b has got bd okay. Pro protein a has got ad and protein b has got binding domain okay and if these two proteins are separate if they don't interact if the two proteins do not interact then can they act as the transcription factor 
no sir no sir no right no, sir. okay good good and if they interact together if they interact together can they behave like a transcription factor yes sir so if they interact it, 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 it may it may not be the exactly ideal transcription factor but can they behave like a transcription factor yes sir they can be yes, yes sir. sir okay so now the inter okay say if if again i'll repeat if the two proteins do not interact they do not work as a transcription factor if the two proteins interact they work as a perfect transcription factor okay okay yes, sir. yeah yes, you make a note of this point this is the principle of say yeast hybrid assay okay yes. fine so now how to know how to know whether the fully transcription factor is produced or not here is an example you can see here can you see this picture yes sir yes sir okay see, there is one protein here there is one protein here called as protein x and it has got only binding domain there is no ad domain here whereas there is one more protein here which has got only ad and this is y protein okay and imagine these two proteins there is interaction here so therefore this is a protein molecule which is brought about by the interaction of these two proteins okay say so x and y have interacted together perfectly so therefore it has it looks like a single transcription factor and now ad and bd are brought to is it clear yes yes sir. yes sir now because there is bd it will specifically recognize a specific region on the promoter okay yes. and then what we do is we'll put a reporter gene here on the downstream and we'll put a reporter and it could be a simple reporter like gus and imagine imagine now i have two proteins maybe it could be it may not be x and y but it could be say uh, a protein having bd and b protein having ad if the gus reporter is positive means if there is gus expression if there is gus expression then my question to you is whether a and b are interacting or not interacting interacting ha huh? if there is gus expression if there is gus expression the gus ex when there is when there will be gus expression gus expression will be there only when the ad and bd are brought together and when ad and bd are brought together when there is interaction between a and b okay okay so therefore yes, if if there is gus expression what is the meaning of it a and b are uh, interacting yeah yeah okay, yeah a and b are interacting so therefore there is a formation of the complete transcription factor so therefore there is expression of the gus gene so yes. each time whether there is interaction or not is decided by looking at a reporter gene if the reporter gene expresses then you say that the two partners are interacting if the gus is not or the if the reporter is not expressing then we say that the two partners are not interacting the whole decision whole decision about the interaction is made through reporter because otherwise every time looking at this interaction is very difficult every time you have to isolate the transcription factors you have to purify the transcription factors difficult so therefore the whole analysis is based on the expression of the reporter gene is it clear yes yes sir yeah yes sir okay so now this is the principle of yeast hybrid assay now we'll take up the yeast one hybrid assay okay yeah
okay so this is the the first one okay right so somebody was asking the cis element the specific cis element for the gal4 and this element is called as uas and it's a just 17 base pair sequence it is called as uas element uas element is what university of agriculture sciences <laughs> no it is called as up, up, upstream activating sequence okay upstream activating sequence and the length of that one is just 17 base pair and it is present in somewhere in the promoter region of those genes okay so that is called as uas element so now here is the yeast one hybrid assay and imagine there is one uas element here and this is my entire library entire library you know uh, expression library you know right yes. Yes. we have studied the expression library dna library protein library and in the protein or cdna library and in the cdna library i told about something about the expression library when the full length when the full length when the full full length genes are cloned into suitable vector in proper orientation in an expression vector then each cdna can express the protein yes sir right yes sir so expression vector is not or expression library is uh, a type of cdna library where you have all the genes from a system say for example if you have made cdna library from rice it might have about 25000 or 30000 different cdnas full length cdnas and clone into a vector with proper promoter and orientation then all these cdnas can be expressed to give the protein is it clear yes sir okay so in this case what you are using you are using an expression vector here and that expression vector is little bit modified here to include a bd okay it has got say uh, it has got a fusion ad and you are searching for that protein which has got natural bd natural bd okay and it it has got a small fusion of ad okay yes is it clear yes. isaac yes sir yes sir are you sure okay okay so now imagine this expression uh, say library has got about 25000 different proteins for example the whole expression library has got 25000 different proteins and you are specifically looking for that protein which specifically binds to uas element which is a cis element and imagine you are transferring this construct to different cells say one cell or or all the the basics each cells will have this construct okay and in addition to that you are transferring one clone of your expression library to one cell okay so therefore there could be 25000 different yeast cells and imagine out of 25000 cells one cell shows the expression of the reporter gene only one cell out of 25000 genes shows the expression of the reporter gene what does it mean they are interacting yes it has got a specific clone of the expression library which makes a specific protein and that specific protein has a bd and that bd is responsible for binding to the specific cis element and it already has a id so therefore it perfectly works as a transcription factor so therefore it drives the transcription of the reporter gene whereas remaining 24999 cells though they have the ad they do not have the bd so therefore they cannot bind to the cis element so therefore there is no reporter gene expression is it clear yes sir yeah 
so now what we will do is you take only that particular clone where there is expression of the reporter gene and go for sequencing of the cdna and find out which is that gene which is that protein you can study everything about that gene now and also everything about that protein is it clear yes sir yes sir okay any doubts on yeast one hybrid assay no sir okay i have sir, already sir, sent one you, sir. I, I i i already have sent one pdf i think right to you yes sir you read that example now okay okay excuse me sir yeah Fr uh, from one cell many cdnas will be formed so we can take as one cdna and uh, further proceed in backward to get the gene from, from one but cell but you said from one cell there will be only one cdna No, no, I am not talking of the inherent CDNA. I am talking of the external CDNA. But you mentioned, so, sir, uh, it the, is a cell. Yeah, from, yeah uh, you a, said it's that a, it's, a, it's a it's a yeast cell. We are using all twenty five thousand yeast cells, and this expression library is from the rice. These C proteins, whatever proteins are expressed, are from rice, not from yeast. Or it can be used in a prokaryote, for example. Okay, say E. coli, for example, not yeast. and this library is from rice is it clear okay sir imagine this entire system is present in e coli and the library is from the rice not from yeast okay okay if you see see yeast then there could be some little bit confusion so therefore uh, the entire construct is, is put into e coli and the library is from the rice okay so each uh, each cell will be differing with the cdna with respect to cdna yes. each 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 cell would differ only for one cdna okay sir okay 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 so now coming to the yeast two hybrid assay say yeast two hybrid assay is perfectly like this one it's perfectly like this one okay you are using two libraries here you are using two libraries or say two constructs in one case say we will have one construct which has which has got say uh, imagine we have a target protein which is called as bait protein imagine this is x protein which has got bd and this is a pool of proteins say rice expression library for example there could be 25000 different proteins and then you take 25 different e coli cells you take 25000 e coli cells and all 25000 e coli cells will have this one this is common for all 25000 e coli cells is it clear kaveri yes sir is it clear yes sir yes yes all all 25000 e coli cells will have this construct whereas they say here there are 25000 different types of proteins but all have got ad so what i do is i'll take one cell and out of 25000 cdna i'll put one here along with this one then i'll take one more cell which also has got this one i'll take another protein here like this i'll do it for all 25000 e coli cells is it clear Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Is it yes, sir. Okay. So then I look for the expression of the reporter gene. I look for the expression of the reporter gene in all twenty-five thousand E. coli cells. I have a question for you. Uh, if none of the cells out of twenty-five thousand cells show reporter gene expression, what does it mean? reporter gene is not expressed in any of the 25000 cells what does it mean they are not in none yes this x protein is in not interacting with any of the rice proteins any of the 25000 rice protein that's the meaning is it clear yes sir yes sir okay 
okay for example out of 25000 proteins or cells say two cells show reporter gene expression two cells show reporter gene expression what does it mean only in those two case they are interacting yes it could be say x plus y or it could be x plus say a so there are two proteins which interact specifically with x protein that is the meaning and then you have identified that cell and you can find out which cdna is present in those cells and then sequence it and find out the gene and the type of the protein okay yes, is it clear yes. okay sir please okay so this okay, is chief not directed yeah this is called as yeast two hybrid assay and similarly the yeast three hybrid assay would also work where you are looking for the interaction between three proteins protein 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 interaction it is little bit complex but you don't have to worry about that one you concentrate only on yeast one hybrid assay and yeast two hybrid assays right now you carefully read the papers or the pdfs which i have already sent to you and they are the clear examples for yeast one hybrid assay and yeast two hybrid assay so now it will be very easy if you go through those two papers to understand okay till now probably you did not have any orient but now you go through those two is it clear okay sir okay there are of course uh, uh, other things i don't want to discuss the selection of the clones all those things one when to use and what's the principle of yeast hybrid assay and the major two types that is one hybrid assay and yeast two hybrid assay the rest of the things you can go through my notes it is the already there in the notes lecture notes which i sent okay sir okay okay right. sir fine any sir hey sir hey sir is not there yeah any questions no questions yeah how to take the screenshot of all 12 people sir participants participants ha huh? so there is option participants no, participants participants yes but uh, i am not getting the videos of all uh, 12 yeah now i am getting yeah any questions no sir no sir yes, sir okay so now you can read those two pdfs is it clear yes sir yes sir and if yes, there is any difficult if there is any difficulty please contact me so that we can have uh, one more class okay sir okay sir Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So sh shall we close? If you don't have any questions. Yes, sir. Or you want to discuss something? Any 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 doubts regarding the expression? Uh, sorry, libraries, DNA libraries and expression libraries. any questions on libraries aisak no question on libraries okay have you understood everything cleaning of the library oh very good very good so shall we end then Ah, yes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Take care.
Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.